feel some type of way about this. I say the Nets win against the Bucks, even though again it's their night, it's their time to shine. The Nets not only losing to this team in the playoffs, but also knowing that that's their championship, man they are definitely going to come out swinging. So I'm picking the Nets. And then the second game of actually the opening night of the NBA is the Golden State Warriors going up against the L.A. Lakers, yes. The Nets and the Lakers going up against, oh, not each other, but going up against on the same night. Very interesting that the NBA did this, knowing that both teams will have a lot of eyes on them. Pretty much people are going to be comparing and contrasting how different these teams played against uh, their opponents, I guess. Um, but man, with that game, with the Warriors and Lakers, um, it's going to be pretty tough. The Warriors have been looking pretty good for their preseason games. I mean, I think they shot nearly like, it was like 60, 73 pointers in a preseason game, which, my God, I mean, the Warriors, we all know they love shooting threes, but that's a little bit of an insanity type of number there. But you know what? I think the Warriors are really going to treat this game like, like a playoff game, like they are going to try their best to try to win this game just to sort of set the tone for the rest of not only their own NBA season, but for everyone else to remember how great of a team they are. Even the, the Lakers, you know, big three, Russ, LeBron, AD, I'm assuming they're all going to be playing that night. I'm going to pick the upset. I'm going to pick the Warriors to beat the Lakers opening night. Now, I'm not saying the Warriors are a better team. I'm just saying the Lakers, they have a lot of time to sort of figure out how to play against each other. This Warriors team has been set in stone for about a year or two already. 
pretty much just adding in Clay Thompson and a bunch of really solid role players like Otto Porter Jr. and Andre Godala. You have two very, very, very X-Factor type of rookies with Kuminga, Moses Moody. The Warriors look pretty good right now. Continuing on with the opening day sort of thing, we're going on to Wednesday, October 20th, and we have a lot of games for this opening day. I guess you could technically call it. Um, we have the Pacers going up against the New Orleans Hornets. I'm going to be picking the Pacers. I think I might pick the Pacers for this game. Although the Hornets are again a very up-and-coming team. They were in the play-in series last year. Hopefully LaMelo Ball can have more of a healthier season this year. The Pacers, if they don't make a crazy trade, I know they are I mean, as of right now, maybe the front runner to get Ben Simmons. There's a bunch of trade talk between, you know, Karis LeVert and Malcolm Brogdon, Karis LeVert and TJ Warren, a lot of things that are pretty interesting going on there for the Pacers, but they have a pretty deep squad if they are fully healthy and all the guys are playing. I actually don't know if any of the people are out for this game or not. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, Pacers are just more of a veteran team. First game of the year, usually young teams like, again, the Hornets, have to play into a rhythm. They're not going to have one because it's the start of the NBA season. I'm picking the Pacers to win this game. But then we have a very anticipated game as well with the Chicago Bulls' first game against the Pistons with Cade Cunningham making his debut. I wish this game was on TV because I really want to watch it, but I guess I just had to look up some highlights of it. But man, um, I'm obviously picking. I'm obviously picking Chicago to win this game. Obviously, as a team, Pistons are, they're getting there. They're putting a team together. Obviously, surrounding Kate Cunningham. You have Sadiq Bey, Jeremy Grant, a handful of other sort of young, aspiring prospects. And then with the Bulls, you have a, a ready-set playoff team, it seems. Uh, just trying to play their way into a good rhythm for the playoffs. Um, yeah, I'm picking the Bulls. Um, then we have the ESPN matchup of the day between the Boston and Celtics and the New York Knicks. Now, I know in my standings video, hopefully I posted it before this video. Hopefully I'm not spoiling anything, but uh, the, uh, it's a very hard sort of placement to put where the Knicks and the Celtics are going to be. You could either argue Knicks over Celtics. Makes sense. You could argue Celtic over Knicks also makes a lot of sense. It's very hard to see where these two teams match up. This game is really going to see where they are sort of standing at at the moment for the beginning of the year. I think, again, since it is a fairly new team with a new point guard, usually integrating a new point guard in your system takes a little bit of time. I think I'm going to pick... Oh, but man, the Knicks are so scrappy. You know what? I think I'm going to pick the Knicks to win this game. They, they, I'm sure they hear the noise and the buzz of them, you know, having a fluke season, still not being sort of that powerhouse yet in the East. I think they might try super duper hard this game. I think I'm going to pick the Knicks to maybe upset this team. I don't know. It's also a Knicks home game. They're playing at Madison Square Garden. Maybe that'll also bring some sort of edge to the team. I don't know. I'm picking the Knicks to win this game. And we have the Wizards going up against the Raptors. I'm picking the Raptors to win that game. The Wizards are going to be in a rough patch for a little bit. If at any point in time of the year they really start get going, would be maybe closer to the end of the year. They just have so many new pieces, so many question marks of their franchise. I mean, I mean Bradley Beal literally any moment, any second can ask for a trade out. It's going to be pretty interesting what happens to the Washington Wizards there, but Toronto, I guess, is more set in stone of a team. Nothing too great, but still at least more set in stone than the Wizards. Um, then we have the Cavaliers against the Memphis Grizzlies. I think I'm going to be picking the Grizzlies to win this game, but don't be surprised about the Cavs. I've always talked about the Cavs, probably mostly because I played with them on uh, my career in NBA 2K, but that team is strangely deep. They have a lot of playable players on their team that actually could provide very well 
you know, not if they were all on the same team, you know what I mean? They have a bunch of good role players, but not really that go-to guy. They could definitely win this game, but I feel like with a fully healthy Jaron, John Morant, hopefully with a little kick in their butt from last year, and man, Memphis Grizzlies didn't really improve a whole lot in the offseason, which really sucks, but I guess all we can do is cross our fingers that the young players improved potentially-wise just by themselves, not really needing to add anything to the team. Then we have the Houston Rockets and the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm taking the Timberwolves, obviously with the fully healthy Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell. That team should be, you know, in a pretty interesting spot in the West, maybe being a sneaky play and seed team. I don't know. We're going to have to see. But the Rockets are probably going to be the bottom of the barrel of the West this year. And hopefully Jalen Green can just have a very good year, get the ball in his hand a lot, really just try to make an impact in his first year. But I'm picking the, the Timberwolves to win this game. Uh, then we have the Philadelphia 76ers going up against the New Orleans, the New Orleans Pelicans. Pelicans, 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 Pelicans. I think, of course, that, you know, if the Ben Simmons trade happens, I think they'll be in a very good spot to win this game. But... If they are playing this game without Ben Simmons, I think it's going to be a very, very close game, actually. Um, I'm still picking the Sixers to win this game because they still have Joel Embiid. They still have a very good deep team. I think Tobias Harris finally knows his role now, knowing he's going to probably be the number two guy until the Ben Simmons debacle tra travesty gets finally finished with. I think he will have a very good game as well. Sure, the Pelicans have Ingram and Zion, but I mean, even that team is not even in the best of places right now, if you ask me, but I'm picking the Sixers. Hopefully the Ben Simmons thing can get at least a little bit more clarity by the time the season starts, that's for sure. Then we have the Magic going up against the San Antonio Spurs. Um, not the greatest of matchups of teams, but I think I am going to pick, I'm not sure if Jonathan Isaac or Marco Fultz will be playing in this game. If they are, I'm picking the Magic. If they aren't, I'm picking the Spurs. I think the Magic, when they are fully healthy, you know, they're not the worst team in the NBA, but I feel like the Spurs this year are finally starting their rebuilding process, which, thank God, they should have been done like three years ago, I feel like, but Hmm. Jalen Suggs is really good. Cole Anthony is a bucket, a walking bucket. If Fultz and Isaac are there, I think they win. But if not, I mean, DeJounte Murray, Devin Vassil, um, they have a lot of good pieces on the Spurs. They're just looking for their, you know, cornerstone, their next guy, their next Duncan, Kawhi. You get the gist. That's what they're looking for. And they're going to tank for him. Uh, then we have the Thunder and the Jazz. I'm going to be taking the Jazz, obviously. Thunder, young, scrappy team with SGA, an amazing young player. All-star potential. But the Jazz are the Jazz. Again, in my standings video, they're going to be fairly good in the Western Conference. Make sure you guys check out that standings video. Ooh. Then we have another powerhouse game on ESPN. We have... The Denver Nuggets going up against the Phoenix Suns. Man, um, I think I am going to be taking the Phoenix Suns here only because Denver is still without Jamal Murray. And Jamal Murray, for a lot of people out there don't know, he is actually such a viable piece to the Denver Nuggets franchise, man. He is their next go-to guy besides MVP, Nicole Jokic. This is going to be a very close game. I feel like that playoff series with Denver, they were run down. They were super duper tired. I feel like now they definitely have a chance at maybe upsetting the defending Western Conference champions, but Phoenix is still Phoenix. It's also a Phoenix home game. I'm picking the Phoenix Suns. We saw how well Aiden played Jokic. Hopefully Devin Booker can even have another step in his great young career already. Chris Paul Hopefully can at least stay consistent with how he was last year, not taking any nosedives 
and sort of uh, how well he can play into his age. Then we have, lastly, for the uh, October 20th day, we have the Kings going up against the Portland Trail Blazers. Now, I'm picking the Blazers to win this game, but uh, so far seeing from their preseason games, definitely not too happy with how they've been playing. Sure, it is just the preseason, but their bench still looks like uh, bad. It still looks pretty bad. So maybe some guys like Anthony Simons, Nazir Little, some of the younger guys, some of the guys who get needed more into the rotation, like Larry Nance Jr., just need to get more playing time with the team. And then maybe over time, they can just play better and better and better and better. But as of right now, uh, I'm picking Portland. Even though the Kings can definitely be a team that can surprise the Blazers, definitely they're a young team. They're going to be playing up and down very fast, kind of a hard game to play for your first NBA game for the October 21st games, which, by the way, is my birthday, October 21st. Uh, we have a really dope matchup between the Dallas Mavericks and the Atlanta Hawks. Um, that's definitely really cool. Um, obviously, Luka Doncic versus Trey Young always going to be tied together for probably the rest of their careers since involving their trade together during the NBA draft. Man, that's going to be a really good game. Um, I guess, I mean, I can't really give any team the edge. I mean, I guess Atlanta is at home, so maybe they deserve the edge. But then again, the Dallas Mavericks do have Luka Doncic, who is going to be on an MVP type of uh, trail for this year. I feel like he's going to be locked in on that award, I feel. Um, man, this is going to be a close game. I think I might... I'm going to pick maybe the upset. I don't know if it technically is, but I'm picking the Mavericks over the Hawks. I mean, of course, the Hawks were, you know, nearly the what, eight, uh, Eastern Conference champions for the East last year, going up against a crazy Milwaukee Bucks team, but Dallas is probably going to be pushing for a good year this year. I'm hoping that the new coach and Jason Kidd can really kick the behind of Kristaps Porzingis and really get him going to at least somewhat of sort of the old Kristaps Porzingis of the past. It's basically just the same Dallas Maverick team against the same Atlanta Hawk team. I'm just going to be picking the upset because I don't feel like I've really been doing that a whole lot in these videos. So we have a matchup of the Milwaukee Bucks going up against the Miami Heat. And um, of course, we know this is a new Miami Heat team now with the point guard head of Kyle Lowry. And obviously with that, it might take them a little bit of time to get sort of readjusted to maybe this new system they're going to be running for next year. Um, also with the Bucks losing the uh, first game of the NBA season, I don't think the Bucks are a type of team that are going to start 0-2 in the NBA season. I'm going to pick the Bucks to win this game. Could the Miami Heat do it? Of course. Miami did beat this team two years ago in the playoffs, but last year got swept by the Bucks. So I feel like that theme is going to keep going on. I feel like Miami definitely does have a chance to definitely win this game. Of course, the, the Miami Heat, but I feel like the Milwaukee Bucks, since losing their opening night game against the Nets in my eyes, uh, it's going to have a little bit of fire in them. I'm picking the Bucks to win this game. And then the last game of the year, well, the last game of opening day, uh, we have the LA Clippers going up against the Warriors. Wow. Um, of course, if Kawhi Leonard was playing this game, this game would be so cool and fun to watch. But obviously with Kawhi Leonard being out for maybe the entire year this year, I think the Warriors have a pretty good shot at being 2-0. Now, of course, their first game against the Lakers, that's more of a coin toss. This is more me uh, speculating, I guess, on the Lakers having to sort of get readjusted to their new play style and everything like that with all the new players they have. So I think this game is going to be fun to watch, but I feel like that the Warriors are still going to have the edge over the Clippers, even though the Clippers are basically just, you know, the same team, maybe with even a better Paul George. So defensively, kind of have to see how that matchup works out, but I'm going to be picking the Warriors to start 2-0 on the NBA season. So, yeah, that's all the games. Um, I will say the 
Dallas Atlanta Hawk game, super excited about. The Bucks Heat game, I'm super excited about. Uh, the ESPN game with the Celtics and the Knicks, that's going to be a very scrappy game, especially inside MSG. Really cool. Um, I'm really excited to see the uh, definitely the, the the Orlando Magic play this year. Really going to be watching them probably more closely than I ever have before. I'll see now having. Jalen Suggs, maybe if more of their guys can come back and be consistent and healthy, they definitely have some good building block pieces there. And of course, all the games, both games for the actual opening night, the Nets and the Bucks, the Warriors and the Lakers, both those games are going to be absolutely amazing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys comment down below, maybe your favorite matchup of the night, the game you're most excited for. And yeah. Hopefully you have a good rest of your day or night or ever watching this video. Make sure to like the video if you do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Really hope you're doing well. I love you.